tonight we've got a star-studded lineup where we'll be heading back to Middle Earth for the first part of the Hobbit trilogy and meeting Irish star Aidan Turner. Movie show reviewer Carla Zambro will be checking out Tom Cruise's performance in the hard edge thriller Jack Reacher. Do you think I'm a hero? I am not a hero. Rob Ross will also be chatting to director Kirsten Sheridan and the cast of her new movie Dollhouse. And I catch up with legendary director Ang Lee for his new movie Life of Pi. It's the movie show. Welcome to the show. Today is a celebration about all things little. Yes, we've all got a wee bit baggins here in celebration of the Hobbit. Speaking of Hobbit. Seven weeks. Seven weeks on a box. <laughs> anyway, later on in the show, Carla Zambra will be here to review the movie, as well as Tom Cruise's new detective thriller, Jack Reacher, and Ang Lee's adaptation of Booker Prize winning novel, Life of Pi. Kirsten Sheridan will be telling us about her brand new and slightly disturbing drama, Dollhouse, and Moreto Baggins here will be <laughs> attempting to learn how to stunt drive. But first, it's back to the Shire for the long awaited prequel to Lord of the Rings. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you The Hobbit. How tall are you? I'm not very tall, Alan. Okay. There, look. Oh. Mm, I know. Far to the east, over ranges and rivers, lies a single, solitary peak. The dwarves are determined to reclaim their homeland. Peter Jackson's latest movie sees a curious hobbit, played by Martin Freeman, journeying to the Lonely Mountain with a lively group of dwarves to help reclaim a treasure stolen from them by the dragon Smog. If Baggins loses, we eat it whole. Fair enough. So, Aidan, a lot of people will recognise you as Rory from the clinic, so you're well known to Irish screens. Right. So, how do you make it from the clinic all the way to the Shire? Oh, how do you make it there? Uh, I don't know. Look, a lot of luck, really. Um, I sort of Peter Jackson sort of looking out for me. I, I did a show uh, called Being Human on BBC Three. I played a vampire on that show, and Peter was. Uh, he says he was a fan. I don't quite believe him. I think he was just aware of the show uh, and and saw me in it and sort of summoned me from from Cardiff where we were shooting that show to London to meet him and. I just kind of got the part, really. I mean, it all happens quite quickly. It's, it's quite weird, yeah. And how does it feel to be part of such an epic film? It's hard to take it in. It's quite surreal even to be here and looking back. And, you know, I mean, I remember when the Rings movie came out and stuff, and now to be a part of a similar story, to be in Middle Earth, it's, it's surreal. It's quite weird, but it's great in the same time. What was it like to work with so many huge names and probably people that you've seen on screen so many times before and all of a sudden, you know, their, their colleagues, their fellow cast Yeah, members. amazing. I mean, it's, it's a credit to them. I mean, they, everybody just made everybody else feel so welcome. I mean, you, you never felt like when you were talking to Ian that you were really talking to, you know, Sir Ian McKellen. It's, it's, it's just Ian, you know, and it's, it's lovely and he makes you feel that way too. And I think everyone realised we were in Middle Earth for a year and a half and everyone had to get on and, and gel together and stuff and, and we just did. It was just easy and, and enjoyable. Well, yeah. Aidan Turner, thank you very much for oh, talking to us Thank you very today. much. Cheers. Home is now behind you. The world is ahead. Carla Zambra, welcome back. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. Good. Uh, straight to it. I suppose the problem here with this is when you go and revisit something that's so well known, so successful, so well loved, and you don't either equal or better and add to it, it's a failure. So what was your take on this? There's always that danger when you revisit something that has done so well and has been so well known, and particularly as well, Lord of the Rings was a relatively new departure for cinema audiences. They hadn't seen the likes and the scale of what happened in Lord of the Rings before. So we're used to that now, so things have moved on. So it is definitely a big risk bringing The Hobbit to the screen. For me, I found it kind of a little bit too self-indulgent on Peter Jackson's part. The film was really, really long. Not a lot happened in it. Okay, yeah, there's battles and they begin on their journey, but it just took too long to do everything. They could have cut an air out of this. So plot's a little bit, a little bit stretched, perhaps. Yeah, I think that's an understatement. <laughs> One thing about this film is it is visually stunning. They shot it um, at a rate of 48 frames. Now, most films um, are shot at 24 frames, so it's double. So that's to enhance the 3D that you see. And you actually feel 
like you're a part of it. You feel like you can almost reach out and touch the flares in the shire or touch the grass. This is 3D at its finest. This is the first time it's ever been done, isn't it? This 48 frames per second thing. First time it has ever been done. So this is completely new for audiences the whole world over. One of the elements that really completely shines in this film is Martin Freeman, who plays the lead role, Bilbo Baggins, who was really sought after by Peter Jackson. How did you find him? He is Bilbo Baggins. And I, I was reading up a little bit about what Peter Jackson had to say about him and he wanted him to be terribly English. And he is terribly English. And I actually can't imagine any other actor playing Bilbo Baggins the way Martin Freeman played it. So before we pass final verdict, you said the exposition is too long and they could have chopped an entire hour out of the film. Was that enough to sour the experience or do you recommend it solely on the on the back of the visual experience? Ultimately, when we see the three films all together, I think it'll make more sense. It'll be more kind of worthwhile. Definitely, it's definitely worth going to see based on the visuals alone. Very strong, Carla, thank you very much. If you do fancy another little visit to Middle Earth, The Hobbit, an unexpected journey is in cinemas nationwide from this evening. And as always, do let us know what you thought on hashtag the movie show. Well, the Christmas party season is well and truly upon us now, but in Kirsten Sheridan's new movie, we see a house party with a difference. It shows us what happens when a bunch of juvenile delinquents break into a wealthy person's mansion and embark on a destructive spree. Oh, no. Just smash up. Here, it's cool. I'm watching it, Dad. No! What's your secret? The guy needs to be changed. <laughs> <laughs> the guy needs to be changed. First thing, where did you get the idea for it originally, or, or how did you decide this is what I'm going to do next? Well, we broke into a house in Dockey <laughs> and uh, wrecked it. And so we thought, hey, let's make a movie. Um, no, we had a location, so it's actually my parents' house in Dockey, and uh, my dad and mum were away. Jim was making a movie called Dream House, I think, at the time, which is odd. So I, I liked the idea of uh, getting a group of kids from the north inner city and breaking into a house because I wasn't very comfortable writing a film about people in Dockey because I didn't grow up in that world. You know, I liked taking something quite authentic, kind of wild, extreme on the edge characters and putting them in this totally different setting that they're not usually in and just those two worlds kind of clashing really is what I wanted. Have a seat, man. <laughs> Sit down, man, still. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> What's your name? Huh? Is it Paul? William? David? Joseph? What? Is it Mary? Is it Peter? Peter! Is it Peter? Wouldn't ask you a little personal question, do you? Where'd you get the cardigan? <laughs> so how much did you know? Did you know what you were getting into at all? I kind of knew what I was getting into. So I was told certain things about my character that, that I wasn't allowed to tell anybody else. So I had to keep that from them, which was... Horrible, it was so horrible. Because I suppose, what, 85% of the film is based on pure improvisation. Mm. It was very kind of scary as well, you know, even though we were having this so much fun and stuff, we didn't know, I didn't know, you know, physically and emotionally where my character was going to go at the end of this mm. film. Mm. Oh, yeah, I did. We chopped it. I did. I did. We chopped it. I did. Stop it. Even the dialogue, it was all improvised and I'd give it back to them on set and they'd go, oh, yeah, that, that's how I talk, you know, because I can't write six people who are 15 from Sheriff Street. Like, I can't really do that, you know? So it's more kind of a, a, a communist set you're running? Yeah, I guess so, with a dictator at the moment. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. This is Stuba. There was a few yeah. things that we did, like improvisations in Britis, yeah. and Kirsten would say, OK, do you remember that thing you did in Britis on the, the Tuesday where, I don't know, this scene? And she'd say it, and we kind of just reenacted it again, you know? Yeah. But on top of that, like, there is an awful lot of secrets in the films. And when these secrets would kind of reveal themselves, we were just gonna, I mean, Kirsten would pretty much just say, right, three, two, one, action. What's the story? <gasps> Every day on the shoot was great, and I was actually seven months pregnant when I was making it, so it was a bit mad. But How does that work? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, you get a funny energy, I suppose, and and it was really handy because the crew couldn't give out because because they couldn't say they were tired because I was. <laughs> so I thought maybe next time I'll just pretend I'm pregnant every film I make and no one can complain. You know. There's a reason you're here tonight, isn't it? Like, she obviously brought you for a reason. Come on, tell me what the story is. You can't film me, baby girl. So 
if you fancy checking out some of the debauchery yourself, Dollhouse is in cinemas at the moment. Now, after the break, we have an exclusive interview with Ang Lee about his new movie, Life of Pi. Carla will be back here to give us her opinion on that, as well as Tom Cruise's new flick, Jack Reacher. And if you fancy the sight and sound of Mairead Farrell screeching and wreathing in discomfort, then check out her forthcoming valiant attempt <laughs> at stunt driving. See you after the break. Welcome back. Now, next up, based on novel One Shot, Jack Reacher is a thriller starring Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher, a former military police officer who drifts through the United States of America with no fixed abode, but with an uncanny knack for finding trouble. Jack Reacher is a ghost served in the military police. A brilliant investigator. Troublemaker, too. You don't find this guy unless he wants to be found. Excuse me, sir. There's a Jack Reacher here to see you. How did you feel handing over your book, which is probably like your baby? And were you afraid that when you got it back, it wouldn't actually be the same kind of ideas that you handed over? Well, it's a good metaphor, that. And I think everybody would understand that. I mean, would you hand your baby over to somebody you trust? I was actually 100%, well, 99% confident from the start that I'd pick the right people. I knew they'd do a fine job. And then it came back and it was actually better than a fine job. And I thought, yeah, this is just fantastic. You know, we, we, we struck gold here. I have nothing to lose. And if you're smart, that scares you. He's got a huge fan base and fans are quite protective of Reacher. And there has been a little bit of criticism of Tom Cruise's Reacher. What do you think of Cruise's Reacher? Over the months that we were working together, I actually ended up more impressed by the similarities between Cruise and Reacher than the differences. Spiritually, he was very like Reacher. And I think that ultimately, the physical difference really just doesn't matter. That's the great thing about Tom Cruise, because you do not get to be a superstar at his level unless you are a really talented actor. And that's what we were zeroing in on, is the talent. And the name is fantastic, obviously. It's gonna help the movie, but it's the talent that creates the movie. Remember, you wanted this. Carla, this movie is Tom Cruise wearing a leather jacket and sunglasses playing an action hero. We've seen this before. Yeah, I think it, there's something very familiar about the character of Jack Reacher, even though Jack Reacher has never been brought to the screen before. And it's a little bit brand Cruise, you know, and I definitely think that's where the film falls down because it's very hard to believe in Tom Cruise as Jack Reacher because you see him just as Tom Cruise. 
So there's no emotional attachment to the character? Exactly, yeah. And what they could have done was maybe supported him with, you know, well-known female or other characters, you know, surrounded him with well-known Exactly, actors. well, like, Rosamund Pike does quite well in the role. Richard Jenkins is, is really good. David Oyelowo, he's quite good as well as Emerson, who's the detective. So he is, so he is surrounded by relatively well-known actors who are very good at their jobs. Mm -hmm. But again, it's Tom Cruise, it's all about Tom Cruise. Helen? No. Helen, are you hurt? About to tell you how this works. Do you think I'm a hero? I am not a hero. The lawyer's all yours. On second thought? I'd like to kill you. This movie is based on the ninth book, which is called One Shot, and of course they're written by the author Lee Childs. It's got a huge fan base throughout the world. Lee Childs really understands crime thrillers, and this doesn't really translate onto the screen, unfortunately. Now, Chris McQuarrie, who's the director, also wrote the screenplay, and he wrote The Usual Suspects. Wow. So you are expecting a hell of a lot more than you actually get. It resorts a lot to stereotypes, like you meet the bad guy down a dark alley under a bridge. Oh, no. The dialogue is very cheesy and stinted, like, you know, do you want to see the back of an ambulance? <laughs> like, God. what? Come on. So who will enjoy this movie? I can't really say fans of the books because I think fans of the books will be disappointed. I think, yeah, Tom Cruise fans are probably really going to be the only group that are going to want to go see it. Well, after hearing what Carla has to say about Jack Reacher, if you want to go see it yourself, you can check it out. It's in cinemas nationwide on St. Stephen's Day. Now, Mairead Farrell may be many things, intelligent, confident, attractive, prone to eating garlic before we shoot the show, but one thing she most certainly isn't is an even remotely competent driver. So when the opportunity arose for one of us to learn stunt driving, I very graciously put her name forward. Irish viewing public, you are welcome. Owen McDermott thinks being in the car with me is like the Irish version of driving Miss Daisy. But today, I'm gonna prove him wrong because I'm gonna learn how to stunt drive. Great! And tasked with turning me into a daredevil driver is one of Ireland's leading stuntmen and stunt coordinators, Brendan Condren. Describe to me in detail what your job entails. Well, as a stunt performer, mm -hmm. basically we either double actors or else we perform stunts. Mm -hmm. And as a stunt coordinator, we basically set up stunts for actors and for stunt performers to make things safe on film sets. So overall, it seems very technical with a sprinkle of daredevilness thrown in, is that right? Well, definitely with the driving and the things, there's a lot of techniques involved, basically to learn how to correct the car, let the car correct itself, um, especially for high speed. The faster you're going, the quicker you need to be able to react. You need to be able to trust the car and trust yourself. So do you think you'll be able to do anything with me? We're going to try. OK. All right, so this is just a demo, so nice and easy. Yeah. yeah. We're going to take a nice and easy to these phones. I can handle that, that's fine. I'll get car sick, yeah. So maybe. Oh, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it, I don't like it. What is that smell? I oh, actually can't um, travel backwards on a train. Oh, you're in for trouble now. Oh, no, really? Oh, God. Ah! No, no, I don't like it. <laughs> you love it by the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think you're ready for a go yourself? Beautiful. <laughs> Okay, and pick up the other cone. Don't turn so much on the stereo. Okay, so you have to go around the cone and not knock them over. It's the back of the box. Start straight up the stereo. Okay, straight. Oh! Just kill, kill another one. 